for most South Africans, the supplement industry is simply means that you're taking a supplement to get more exercise, to be more fit. But the reality is all that more different and it's a deep and dark hole. In this expose, we take a look at what really is going on. Doc, we want to talk about uh, performance enhancers with the idea of young kids taking them today. It seems to be an upward trend in the last 10 years. Why is that so? There's a number of reasons for that. The first is that the whole sports scenario has changed to one of professionalism or at the very least semi-professionalism even at a school level. So schools have become extremely competitive I think to an extent we're selling children a bit of a lie in that we see sport as a career option, whereas to be quite honest for most of them it's not really a career option. Parental pressure as well as coach, coach pressure plays a huge role. We found in a study that we did over four consecutive years with under 16 um, year old rugby players that of these 198 players, 87% of them wanted to increase muscle mass due to pressure from parents or coaches and 42% of them wanting to use supplements because of that pressure. And yet half of these players felt that their diet still needed a lot of attention. They see it as something to explore, as something quite glamorous and to achieve that they want to improve their performances, improve their size etc and be noticed in their sports. So one way they perceive that they can achieve this is by improving their energy levels and improving their physiques and they do this in one of two ways. One is deliberate cheating so they might take performance enhancing drugs which they know are illegal but they know are also very effective and the anabolic steroids are the ones that come to mind and we've chatted before about how potent these products are and how dangerous they are because many of their side effects are actually hidden. The other group are products that they perceive to be legal and they perceive to be not harmful to their bodies. And those would be the supplements that are freely commercially available. So they can work, walk into any pharmacy or any supplement shop and they can buy products which may claim to improve body mass, lean muscle size, give the increased energy um, output, etc. And they like those claims and they take those products to try and improve their performances. And so there's a lot of targeted marketing now at young people in particular. So you open a sports magazine, for instance, which they might read, or a rugby-related magazine, these advertisements will be there. Uh, the information they receive is pretty much unilaterally from the industry. There's not much balance. And that's because the regulation of this process has been quite poor. And as a result, children are taking to using these supplements and it comes with a certain number of problems. The supplement industry is largely unregulated. So as a result, a lot of these products can make outrageous claims on their brands. And it's, it's, it's not a brand specific problem. It's, it's, it's pretty much across the board problem. Sometimes these supplements or a lot of them claim to be, have been tested um, so that they don't contain various banned substances. But even in those instances, one has to remember that the testing is batch specific. It's a very, very complex situation. And even if a brand claims that it has been tested, it does not necessarily mean that that product has a performance enhancing uh, or will make a performance enhancing difference. Um, so in other words, that there's no proof, they don't have to prove that the product actually does what it says it, it, it claims to do. And another concern is that it doesn't mean that this product has been shown to be safe in terms of health. How do you educate uh, uh, the, the youth of today, the pros and cons of taking uh, supplements? So I'd say there are three levels of regulation. The first level is the national level um, statutory regulations 
such as we have for pharmaceutical products. So if I prescribe an antibiotic, that antibiotic has been through years of research, trials, and over a process of months or even years, they will register that product. There's no such registration for supplements yet, but there is a move to implement that, and hopefully that will come into place, which will then remove a lot of products from the shelves which are making false claims. I think what has harmed our industry a lot is irresponsible behaviour. As I mentioned earlier, the, the question of outrageous claims has been a problem. The other problem and relates to the sports nutrition market. Now, we worked very closely with Professor Tim Noakes and the UCT Sports Science Centre, and two major problems emerge in that sector. On the one hand, you've got ingredients which are stated on the label, but they're actually absent in the product. So people are telling you you're getting these vitamins and these minerals and these amino acids and if you analyze the product, it's not there. Now clearly that's fraudulent. The more serious problem is that there's an ingredient in the product which is not stated on the label. And so often we've heard of sportsmen uh, that have been have tested positive for banned substances and they don't know where this came from. Uh, and have innocently taken a sports supplement that contains an allobolic uh, steroid or other banned substance and that has caused us problem. There are certain retailers that have taken a lead in this and have tested the products that they have on their shelves. They have rid their shelves of some of the products which have made false claims or which may contain information uh, on their labels which is uh, untrue and they have put up particular educational posters, information, etc., because they feel that they have a duty to try and protect the customer in the face of a lack of, of national le uh, legislation to do so. And the final level of regulation would really be self-regulation, whether that be the athlete, uh, him or herself, the parents or the school or club. And that's where the education role comes in, to make sure that at a young age, athletes understand that it's the training and the day-to-day -day nutrition that are the two most important aspects. Is it safe to say that the age-old adage that eat your vegetables and um, you'll get fitter, you'll get stronger, does that still apply uh, to the modern-day athlete given that they want the edge, like you say? Well, certainly at a young age, there's no question that a balanced diet, which is based on proteins and a, an array of of vegetables and, and healthy contents is really what they, what they need. Uh, and, and that's really what we have to put across to them, that you know, we need to try and emphasize that day-to-day -day eating, the replenishment uh, around exercise sessions, etc., is the most important. And it's going to take them through on a lifelong basis rather than reaching immediately for a supplement. And I think those retailers which have taken a responsible approach will agree that if a supplement is felt to be indicated, then that should be customized according to that particular athlete's needs. So I'm, I'm not saying there's no place for supplements. I'm just saying let's look at it in an age-appropriate fashion and let's seek medical advice and nutritional advice that's appropriate for that individual's needs. So before taking a supplement, it is very important that when does this under the um, guidance of a sports physician or a dietitian knowledgeable about sports nutrition and that one actually first strategizes the diet that's what we call smart nutrition because through the correct dietary strategies here I'm talking about a periodized diet one can achieve a lot more than the one to three percent performance enhancement that one may get from taking a particular supplement so a lot of this information is discussed on the Booksmart website, which one can uh, get at www.booksmart.com. And more information will be added to this website over the period of the uh, next few months. But the point that I really want to reiterate is that um, one mustn't just randomly go and take a supplement. It's to pay attention to the diet first, and then if thinking about taking a supplement to do this under the guidance of a sports physician or a dietitian working in sport. You know, when one looks at sports nutrition, uh, there are two elements to that. There are the macronutrients, uh, where people want to build muscle, they need the protein, they want to put on some weight for rugby or whatever, uh, carbohydrates, and then obviously the micronutrient portfolio to optimize your metabolism.
I think when it comes to making a product choice, um, most of our products are, are sold in the pharmaceutical environment through, through pharmacy chains. When in doubt, have a word with the pharmacist or the assistant. Say, is this a reputable brand? Where is it manufactured? Is it imported? And if so, from where? And has it been tested? And I know that some of, some of our pharmacy chains are now making it mandatory um, for suppliers to pay for um, analysis to make sure that there is nothing in it. So more often than not, if you, if you consult with your retailer, a reputable retailer, they would be able to guide you quite well. But then too, you know, the internet is a fantastic facility. You can't believe everything you read, um, but you can certainly look at a company's credentials and how long they've been in business and where they are and where they manufacture. So yeah, it's really a case of just being sensible. How does one, um, with that in mind, look at the product that they're taking and then say, okay, let me check and let me verify. What is the process that you would suggest that they would need to do? Because of the lack of regulation in the industry, it has become fraught with the dangers of contamination and being tested positive for a banned substance. So for instance, there was a USN product some years ago which was given to uh, some of our national rugby players and contained a banned substance. And two of our players were sent home from an overseas tour as a result of being tested positive for this particular product. You know, in terms of the prevalence of the Saru um, National Youth Weeks where they've tested under 18-year-old players over the past couple of years, they found that 8 out of 17, 717 players tested positive, which is about just over 1%. But you actually don't want your child to be that statistic. What we also know about prevalence is that children are starting to use more and more supplements and that one in four supplements may carry the risk of um, containing a banned substance, particularly those supplements that promise energy, extra energy or increased muscle mass, decreased fat mass or changing hormone levels. So the risk is there, it's a real risk and it's pretty much a random risk. What's happened is again the industry has come up with a process of, of trying to regulate what the contents are of these products. There, is, uh, there are a few different companies available, but one of the more prominent ones is a company called Informed Sport, which is a UK-based company, which will independently assess every batch of a product of various companies, and they will make sure that firstly, the product contains the, the substances it claims to contain in the same uh, proportions as listed on the label and secondly that there are no harmful or banned substances in there from a list of about 160 potential banned substances which are most commonly found in these agents. You know where there's, where there's big money at stake and, and fame and fortune um, there's a tendency for people to cheat. I think in the main and again I come back to this question of the safety of the product is built in at the point of manufacture. Now, either you've got a crooked manufacturer or you haven't. And I think that is where regulation and, let's say, law enforcement needs to kick in. That people are held accountable. Uh, all GMP licensed facilities have a responsible pharmacist. They can lose their license if they sign off something that is not correct. Um, and ultimately, the Companies Act prescribes that the chief executive is ultimately on the carpet if there's a problem as does the Consumer Protection Act. So there's a legal framework for, for accountability. So it's really a question of integrity, trust in a brand, to research your brand and say, is this coming from a reputable company? Are they manufacturing in, uh, in a GMP facility that is fully licensed? And are their products being tested regularly for things like stability and banned substances? But it is a tricky one. Uh, very often people, what they take is actually not in the supplement itself. They're finding substances independently of that. Uh, and again, maybe that brand gets tarnished because people say, oh, that's what I was using. But the coach may have been giving them something else. So it is a complex field. Um, I think good regulation and good law enforcement will, will go a long way to cleaning up the industry. But ultimately, it's really a question of the consumer having to be aware uh, when he makes a purchase to say, can he trust that product and can he believe what's on the label? 
I think looking for that informed sport mark on a product is a good way, not foolproof, but it's a good way of mitigating against uh, the potential for testing positive in a test. Going forward now and looking to the future, are you foreseeing a possible dip in performance enhancer, uh, to, you know, kids taking performance enhancers with the new regulatory affairs uh, processes that, that you are alluding to that will be, uh, you know, hopefully being implemented? A few years ago, I probably rather naively had this concept that we should stop all children, adolescents taking supplements. Uh, it was the advice I gave was it was uh, don't touch the things and, and it was naive because we're in an environment now where people are seeking every potential edge that they can to improve their sporting prowess. So I don't see a dip coming in, in supplement usage. I think what we have to acknowledge is that it's out there and until we can better regulate the process to make it safer for uh, individuals to be able to take these products without harming themselves, we're going to continue to have firstly adolescents taking inappropriate supplements and secondly the risk of contamination. So I think ultimately that national regulation from a statutory body is what's going to uh, help us in trying to prevent these unfortunate instances. The supplement industry has largely been criticized over a number of years for being unregulated and it remains to be seen how that will be done. In order for us to understand that better, we got a little bit of an insight from rugby itself. Timmy, thank you for taking time to, to sit down with us. Obviously, it's quite a hotly debated issue, uh, the supplement industry and you know, the supplement industry and sports go hand in hand. Um, when looking at kids coming through the rugby ranks, um, what are the sort of the sort of the flags that you know the union, like yourself with the Lions, uh, uh, look for in terms of um, understanding which kids are potentially juicing or which kids have been taking something uh, to enhance their performance? It's quite a difficult topic to to cover uh, because you need to track these athletes from from a very early age to 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 really see the impact and see the changes in the, in, in the body mass and in the body weight. Uh, uh, so you have to measure that in the first place. Uh, the, the second thing for us is to, is to get access to those players because there are so many rugby players participating in the sport and to go from a day-to-day -day basis uh, uh, analyzing uh, uh, and tracking kids, it's, it's, it's quite a difficult task uh, due to the large numbers of, of, of participants. Why is it so difficult? It's quite difficult because uh, you're not allowed to test any school kid. Uh, and SAGE have tried to, to introduce and assist us uh, by, by getting a formula going where the schools actually ask for, for and give permission. Because in the end it's still minor, so you can't just test left, right and centre, uh, get access to kids. So once uh, some schools have signed up to the programme uh, to have positive talks in the first place, because in the first place it's about information. Uh, while you, when you can access information, you're most probably in a better position to make better choices. Uh, so the biggest thing for us is to most probably to ensure that that access to information is available. Uh, what the kids and the parents do after that, that most probably you don't have any control over. How have the supplement industry in your mind sort of uh, played their cards into, into, in, in, into the realm of, uh, you know, sort of juicing, for lack of a better word? You see, uh, for, for them it's a business, uh, and businesses like to grow, and businesses like to have clients, otherwise they can't grow. So they use these, these, these top class athletes, uh, and they don't say they have became like that over, uh, over a number of, number of years, because that, that physical development doesn't happen overnight. Uh, so for us it's, it's that big, big challenge and, and that realization that, that kids need to pick up on, but you can't come, become like a top athlete overnight. Uh, and, and you have to understand growth spurs uh, and, and the whole development of the body over time. Uh, so for us, that, that stays still the critical matter. How do we ensure that kids are actually open-minded and doesn't uh, 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 subdue themselves to peer pressure? Because at the end, it's actually peer pressure. Because the best built athletes must probably achieve much quicker than, than any other athlete. Uh, not understanding the, the actual consequences of, of those sort of actions and, and, and misuse of of sports enhancing uh, supplements uh, that might 
the on the water listings. Obviously, when speaking to the supplement industry, and we had a uh, had them had some of the people from the from the National Council voice their opinion, uh, saying that their industry is ra largely unregulated, and by that being un unregulated, uh, um, it does then pay place a, you know them in a certain situation, in that it doesn't necessarily have to say what it means on the box in order for them to, to advertise it and market it and sell it. Uh, isn't that, in your opinion, selling a lie to a kid as well and by that starting that off uh, down that uh, pathway? I, I think what's probably the best, is, is like you said now, is to make sure that, that you can actually say what's, what's in it and hand in hand have the water list attached to it so that players can see, but listen, I take this product knowingly that this box that I'm going to take or whatever supplement I'm going to take is going to have one or two or A, B, C of uh, prohibited substances. So I might not be safe in taking it. Uh, the other difficult thing was probably is that these oaks introduce masking agents, but over a period of time you can't track uh, these forbidden sub supplements or substances in, in the blood. Give us an example of what a masking agent would do and, and, and why you say it's hard for for people set up in the professional environment like the Lions or the Springboks or whoever to sort of actively keep tabs on this? Look at it, 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 you first and foremost need to know what you're looking for. Uh, uh, and that hence that what I is, is, is so important. So once SAIDS is doing these tests uh, and they can do it in season, out season, uh, when, whenever it, it suits them, and it's actually a good thing. Uh, the masking agent will most probably at times cover whatever they've been taken for a period of time. And the unfortunate thing is due to a lack of staff, most probably, due to a, a lack of testers, they can go around and test these athletes on a regular basis. The unforeseen thing is happening, that you can't most probably pick up one when people have done for three months or two months, if they've taken forbidden substances, yeah, and now we can cover it. So once you come to the testing, it's, it's a done deal. You, you won't pick it up. How do you foresee going forward that the future of South African rugby uh, eliminates this sort of side of, of, of the sport. What would you like to see and what do you have, for example, I know you deal with the, the development side of things, what do you have in the pipeline that uh, could sort of prevent uh, this way of thinking in terms of uh, not only education but you know, a more stricter, harder line? Like you said, it's difficult because you can buy anything now over the counter uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to state what's in that box. Uh, so the supplement business can turn around and say, but I've, I've never encouraged you, I've, I've just said you can buy it. I, I don't have to explain to you what's in the box, I've explained to you what, what can be the results of using our product. So, uh, and as you mentioned, it's an unregulated business uh, at this stage, uh, driven, driven by, 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 by most probably making money, uh, like any other business. Uh, the unforeseen thing for us is to, to most probably engage earlier, much earlier, then, then, for instance, uh, the selected Kremlin group, the bigger group is, is taking part in trials because the more, pe the more people you can expose to, to, to these sort of things and so open their eyes, the better chances are probably that we're going to have a positive result uh, coming out of it. Last question for me, Tommy. Um, do you feel that the supplement industry should be regulated in this regard um, or are you more open to uh, hearing their voice? Look, but, but definitely, like, like any other business, you, you have to be honest and you have to say what's in your products. Uh, and I think from our side, because we're working in a young environment where kids can easily go, go off the track by using the wrong stuff, is to say what, uh, what your product contains and, and what uh, actually will be the result of using those products. Uh, because that's also important. Because, and I think the other thing is, over a period of time, what is the medical consequences? of using our, our product over, over a period of time. Because that's the other, the other thing that haven't been, been clarified up to now. And that's quite a dangerous, uh, dangerous part of, of this whole business. Uh, not taking into account what will be the result after 10, 15 years in, on an on a individual's body after using of a certain supplement over a period of time. While the performance enhancer industry has put a deep dark hole on South African sport, and it remains to be seen when this regulation will come into play and how it will affect the common man. But for now though, all you have to do is make a change, read the label and understand what you are ingesting. I'm Pashka Mudlia for ANN7, Johannesburg.